Sweet. All right. So like you said, Jace McCreary, JMac, uh, creator of Shift. That's probably how you know me. Uh, I'm going to talk about testing in Livewire. And uh, <laughs> testing always isn't the, uh, the sexiest talk, at, at least not as sexy as Livewire. But uh, I wanted to speak at like the inaugural, you know, Wire Live, uh, the first conference. I thought that was cool. So I reached out to Caleb. And I was like, hey, man, I don't really have very good live wire chops. But I've got some pretty good uh, testing chops. So like, let me know if I can help out. And uh, I, did, I didn't hear back from him. So I said, uh, hey, man, uh, just, just bumping this. Uh, so I really want to speak, please. <laughs> and uh, classic Caleb, he was like, that'd be sick, yeah. So, uh, so I'm here. Uh, so two things from this. One, I'm excited to give the talk. Because I do think testing is something that needs to be covered. I saw a lot of hands raised in Andy's talk. So that was great. Uh, but there's probably still some gotchas in here that we can cover. And then two, never be afraid to, to bump something uh, you know, just once. Maybe not like two, three, four, five, six times, but just once, uh, give it a bump. People get busy, life, no big deal. So in preparing for this, uh, I kind of asked around, and you know, there's kind of like this like bifurcation for testing. It's either like you don't test or you do test. And there's kind of nothing in between. And the learning curve to get you know, to the other side is like very, very uh, tall. Again, Adam uh, talked about this way back in uh, Test Driven Laravel. So I'm hoping to kind of debunk that a little bit, but then also get into some deeper gotchas. The quick answer is uh, you test it just like you kind of test Livewire. And we're all testing in Livewire, right? No, you're not. I know that you're not. I have stats that you're not. <laughs> not everyone is testing all the time. So to dig a little deeper on this, uh, basically in, in Laravel 5.4, uh, the testing layer was like completely rooting. It, it, it's very robust. Uh, and since then, more and more has been added to it. And specifically, what I'm talking about are HTTP tests. Uh, and this allows you to send a request into your application. It kind of runs top to bottom and then gives you back a response that you can make assertions on. And again, this is great. And there's hundreds of assertions that you can make nowadays. Uh, there's also things like model factories now. Uh, there's all sorts of fakes for all the wonderful facades that we're using in Laravel. So what I mean here is that when you're testing in Livewire, you have all of the same utilities and you can work with it just like you would a Laravel test. And so getting into some of those testing utilities, here's the docs. So we can set up a component for testing. We can uh, set it up in other ways, like authorized users. We're going to see a lot of this. And if we scroll, we get, again, all of these wonderful assertions built in, things to check for redirects, status codes, view, view data, file uploads, all the things. Uh, so whether you're familiar or not with testing, I would go through and scroll through this yourself, get some eyeballs on it, and just kind of let those sit in the back of your brain, because there's a lot of them there. OK, let's jump out to demo one here. Uh, we've got a few live demos, a few code demos. Uh, but in here, this is super tiny. This, that, there we go. That's way better. OK, cool. Uh, so this is just a Lar Laravel new application. And during the, the wonderful prompts that we get, I opted to install Livewire, of course. So we have PHP, whoops, not caps, artisan, make Livewire. And we'll do create post. And we'll tack on this dash dash test option. So of course, this generates in current version of Livewire. This might be different in, in v4. But uh, right now, the old school way uh, for me is um, it creates a class for the component. It creates our uh, blade template as well. And then because of that dash dash test option, we get a um, test as well that's created for us in that feature directory like a Livewire test as well. Or sorry, a Laravel HTTP test. And if I do vendor bin PHP unit, what I like about this is it's immediately runnable, immediately passes. And beyond that, if we go dig into the code, it's not just like a stubbed out test. Ooh, that's not gonna be, that's not gonna be so great either. What's this, font, size, anybody? No, font. Let's bring this up. Editor, appearance. It's always in like a weird place. Does anybody know what this is? Font. How can I change this? 24, there we go. Is this a little better? OK. A little bit better. That's going to work. OK. So in here, what's nice about this as well is we're not only setting this up to test, but it's actually testing that exact component. It's not just like a templated test of example and assert true is true, sometimes like you get in uh, Laravel. You actually get the thing that you want to test in here and a basic assertion. So what I call this is kind of like a smoke test. So let's just kind of expand upon it. There we go. Thank you. And we'll run this again. 
And we'll see that it passes in this time instead of just one assertion. Uh, we've run two, both of those, uh, for the status code as well as the view. So jumping back into the slides. So this is the test before. Now, before we kind of dig deeper into actual testing, I just want to give a nod to PEST as well. The difference between writing and PHP unit, again, kind of an OG PHP uh, programmer, so I just you know stick with PHP unit because I got a lot of muscle memory there. But for PEST, here's PEST. It's exactly the same. So notice that the interior for the dissolve from Keynote here, nothing changes in the center. So everything we're going to cover, whether you're using PEST or PHP unit, it's all fine. Okay, also too, I do not have enough time. I've got 19 minutes left. I don't have enough time to write an entire component and go through the complexities of it. So we're gonna use uh, the create order component that's on shift. I, I converted this about six months ago. Uh, before it was just like a lot of, you know, page reloads and flash messages and redirections to here and here and here and all these things. And it, it really just wasn't the best user experience. It, it never really was. Uh, but you know, MVP, single co, you know, solo founder, like it's what, it was what it was and it worked. Uh, but this little screen uh, cast here, we can see that like, there's a lot of things here I can auto-populate from a previous shift. Uh, if I have a subscription to, sh or actually, the most common thing is you paste in your clone URL, and when you paste in your clone URL, it'll pre-fill the rest of the fields. If you have a subscription and you're not on there, you can say, oh, add it here, and then instead of check out and run, it's not gonna say review and run. And of course, I can fill these combo boxes out based on one another as well. So this is just like three or four different paths of probably a dozen paths of how to get to the screen. So not necessarily a lot of code in this component, but a lot of complexity, a lot of use paths, right? So this is the test for that. It's, it's not necessarily to scare you per se, it's, a, it's more to say uh, two things. One, as new to Livewire, I wanted to make sure that I got this right, right? I wanted to make sure that everything was well tested. And then two, also on the same lines, this is the business. Like if you're coming in to buy a shift, to run a shift, you're gonna pay me some money, you want it to work, I want it to work, I wanna get that cash, like it needs to be good, right? So I wanted to make sure that every single base, every single user path was covered. And along the way as a tangent, uh, apparently Keynote has like a 20,000 character limit to its text boxes. So there's actually five more assertions beyond this as well as two helper methods. So again, very large test. Let's dig into some of these. Okay, so kind of like that original demo, we have basically a component that renders a view. So Livewire gives us some setup. We can say acting as. This is authenticated form. You have to sign into shift before you can get to this uh, create order flow. We're gonna write test here to create the order. We're gonna pass it in a product. We're gonna assert the view status code 200 or assert okay. We're gonna assert the view is uh, Livewire. Uh, the create order uh, template in this case, and then we're gonna assert the view has. Much like uh, Laravel, this allows us to basically assert uh, existence, we can assert equality, or we can have a more complex like closure test to make sure that it's doing exactly what we want. Moving along, we saw on that screen we had like different messaging that displays based on what's been filled out, right? It's all kind of reactive. Uh, but just like a Laravel test, you can actually follow the arrange, act, assert uh, kind of uh, flow in your test cases. So we can do a model factory in our live wire test. Uh, we can then take that and pass it in as we're setting up the component. And then we have access again to all sorts of different assertions. In this case, we can assert text on the screen. The reason I want to call this one out is it's really nice. A lot of people kind of reach for assert C, but that actually looks for like raw text in the HTML page whereas assert C text will actually strip out the HTML tags. And if you pass in that second argument as well, you can not escape anything. So if you have something like an apostrophe in your messaging, you can get around things like that too. So just a couple little minor gotchas there along the way. Okay, expanding on that next message, like let's change it out and make sure something happens, right? So to interact with our LiveWire components, we can call things like set. Now set's very interesting. Uh, but basically, it's uh, uh, setting these properties so we can then make sure that something happened on the page. In this case, we'll see that the next messaging uh, changed to, hey, next you're gonna pay, right? Now, sets not really filling out the form in this case, at least not in the sense that it's typing input into the browser. This is programmatically setting the properties on your component through PHP, not the front end, okay? Another little gotcha is that this is different than initializing your component with 
uh, properties, okay? And there's some gotchas there as well. Now that's probably as clear as mud. Code always speaks louder than words, so let's go look at one more demo. So let me just nail this out. Let's get checkout demo two, and we'll jump back into the code here. Hopefully I didn't lose my font size, good, okay. So I have this little gotcha component, and it does basically the same thing. We're, we're setting uh, stuff here, and we're also um, initializing the component with uh, some properties as well. And I like to do this little PHP attribute in all of my tests. This allows me like nice little click through, so I can just click back and forth. One little point here though is I'm using at C and not at covers. At covers will actually affect your code coverage report. So I like C just for the linkage. So just a little aside here. But inside the actual component, notice that this lifecycle method uh, that we have here, updated email, I've got a little dump statement. And then I've got a dump at the top amount to dump out those properties. So if we go and run this gotcha component, we'll see that of course passes, but more importantly, we'll see that as expected, updated is called here because we're programmatically uh, setting that property and the lifecycle methods are getting called because we used set. Of course, mounted is, or mount is being called first at the very top. But where it gets a little bit interesting is that if we look at what's dumped out in these properties, we're actually getting the properties here. But if you remember in the code, this is happening before we're actually setting it. So two things are going on here. One, it's when it initializes your component for testing, it's actually directly setting those properties, which means two things. One, it's happening before your mount method, but it's also not calling your updated lifecycle stuff. That's mostly expected, but maybe not the first time you're coming to this. Another thing is not only is it initializing them that way, but then it is still passing them into mount, okay? And we can add just one more dump to kind of see that. So let's do func get args. And I'll go back and run this again. So we'll get the fuller raw thing here for the first argument, but notice this little second argument. It got passed in as well, right? So even though we initialized that in the component, or sorry, we initialized that in our test, this little verified, it's not actually in our mount. Now it's no big deal given the dynamic nature of PHP, but if you actually are doing like some type hinting and you add foo here, and you go and run this again, you're gonna burn an afternoon figuring out what the hell's going on right there. So that's probably one of the biggest gotchas I came across. I think that's probably very easily corrected with a little bit of reflection. Maybe we can sneak that into four, like after launch. Okay, cool. So anyway, I'll hack on that tomorrow, but that definitely got me the first time through. So just remember that when you are initializing a component uh, in your testing, just remember that this is gonna set the properties. You have access to set any one of the properties, just like you would, but that also will be currently passed into the mount method. So a little bit of a gotcha there. All right, let's get back into a few more things. Okay, so you also have other ways that you can set properties, right? We have these wonderful PHP attributes now and they've been adopted, you know, very great. So like you can set a property with uh, query string data, right? You can set a property with session data, cookie data, all sorts of stuff. So how do we do that? Well, we have more setup methods like with query params. I can pass in something from a link to that form, and then I can assert that it's gonna pre-fill that on the page, right? Similarly, kind of, with session data, there's actually not a with session currently, uh, but again, it's just a Laravel test. It's just a Laravel application. We can set it just like anything else. So in this case, we can just call the session helper, set it directly there, and then test our component and do the assertions that way. In this case, that the connection ID defaulted to the one that's in your session, and that's also the one that got passed into the view data. Okay, everything so far has just been like set up the component and then like make sure it kind of renders the right way. But that's definitely not all Livewire does. We're using Livewire for like its interactivity. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, reactive nature to be able to do multiple things on the page. So how do we do something like that? Well, we have this method call. So in this case, we can call save to simulate clicking that button again programmatically. So if I set all these form fields and then call save, I can make assertions on that. So that gives us a fuller, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, that gives us a fuller test now to make sure that, hey, you can't rerun a free shift, right? I don't wanna get like DDoSed from someone just trying to run a free shift all day that's just not working <laughs> and spinning up a bunch of workers. So I wanna make sure that it's like saying, hey, uh, you know, your original shift failed, here's the number, like contact support, right? 
Similarly, Laravel forms are compound, right? So traditionally, you may have been taught something, or at least I was, like one test case, one assertion, or one test should test one thing. Uh, that's really not the case as we start to lean more towards these like feature or integration style tests, right? Validate is a good example of that, like form validation. So I can set up the component, I can interact with it, I can call save, but maybe I need to do more with that component to get to where I wanna get. Well, instead of breaking that up into multiple tests, it's okay to do it all in one, right? You don't wanna like world build each time you're doing all these other tests. It's gonna have that huge file that we saw. So I'm gonna set up the test one way, test one field, then I'm gonna blank that field out, test another field. I can kind of step through my validation, for example, and make sure that all of those things are, are triggering and then rendering back on the front end. So validation is a good example of that, but again, if you have like an address form and you verify it with the post office or something and you're clicking out a modal and you wanna do all that, just keep, keep calling, keep clicking, keep setting stuff, keep asserting. It's fine to do it all in one. Now, as Andy pointed out, uh, great, but what about the front end, right? So it reminds me of this talk we keep talking about with the, uh, you know, the peaches and the, and the emojis and the eggplants and stuff. Like, what about the front end? I can hear Caleb in my head. Like, so, third and final demo. How much time do I have left? Sweet. All right, so let's go uh, nah again. No, oh, that's not gonna work at all. There we go. So get check out demo three. And what we have here now is a browser test, specifically a pest browser test. So we can remember the classic counter, right, where you have like the little plus button and the minus button and then it's tallying and re-rendered all into the original example, right? So we, in this case, we're gonna visit counter, we're gonna see in that H1, see in the counter that it's one. We're gonna decrement, we're gonna see that it's zero. We're gonna decrement again, we're gonna see that it goes into negative. Uh, we're gonna increment, go back to zero. We're gonna increment twice, it's gonna go to two, right? It should do all these things. That's how that should behave. So let's go over here and run our browser test. This time I'm gonna use pest. And this actually runs our test. It counts stuff, five assertions, the ones I just went through. It ran in 2.81 seconds. This actually brought up Chrome in the background, ran it in the browser, and did all the things. So. This is nice because again, everything I was talking about before is programmatically or simulated or whatever in the, in the back end test. This gives us more of a front end test to make sure that all that wiring, all of that data massaging, all that alpine that we might be doing is actually working as well. So this is a great way to not necessarily put all your tests here per se, but to augment the things that really matter where I'm pasting in that clone URL and the other fields are correct. That's actually done with alpine on create uh, order. So I have a pest dust test for that. Or sorry, a pest browser test uh, for that. And to that point, I like it because A, it runs locally. I don't need like Selenium and Docker and all these things to like <laughs> run Dusk. I mean, I love Dusk, but I hate Dusk. But like, this is much better in that regard. I will say in Dusk's defense though, it is much more mature than pest browser testing. So if you have a Dusk test suite, I'm not necessarily saying go convert it or anything. But if you're brand new, this, uh, we'll kind of get it done for you. So much faster, much nicer, much much better DX in my opinion. Nuno's really good at stuff like that. So with that, uh, please come talk to me. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to talk. I'm here to talk to you. Uh, talk to me about testing. Talk to me about shift, whatever. Uh, I'm gone dark on Twitter. And uh, next thing I'm going to be working on is uh, fast, uh, fastlaravel.com. So thank you. <laughs>